Alright, good evening everyone, welcome back to Pathologic. So, we went and talked to, what's his face, Vlad Olgimsky. Um, he did not want us to go and talk to his son. I don't quite know where his son is. What else, what other leads do we have to go on? Do I? Oh, I want to do that. Alright, our exhaustion's building up, our hunger's building up. Okay. How do I open my freaking. There it is. It'll tell me. Old Old Gimsky does his best to avoid any interest, so I asked him what his son was doing. Honorable stock for your momentarily lost his temper. I think that the son knows just as much as the father, and it'd be easier to get. Ah, okay, so I don't know where to find the son. Well, we could ask around about that. We should go... Probably go talk to Yulia. She seems to be the most helpful person. She might know where the old Gimsky's son is. Hello, Yulia. This girl is a changeling. She's not the murderer. Okay. Um... Tell me about... Okay. Yet to meet anyone who helped me. Has, uh, do you have any relevant experience? Do you know how a murderer may be found? Mm, killers is the duty of law enforcement officers. I don't do killer hunting, I'm a scientist. Incidentally, it's more than possible that the killer is hiding in the house of Anna Angel, a thespian of sorts. Now, here's another woman worthy of attention. In fact, I heard some ghastly man covered in blood was seen entering her house today. Uh, what kind of woman is this Anna Angel? I struggle to imagine a person whose name is less reflective of her inner self. An unforgiving description. Unforgiving but fair. Anna affects to be suffering, but her hypocrisy is all too eager to see all too easy to see through. If she was generally wanted for the February riots or for the caravan, she would have been found years ago. She manages to trick her destiny for now, but her luck will run dry soon enough. Uh what what caravan? Ace of Diamonds caravan. It left a ghastly imprint on her the way it did with everything it came close to. Still, I'm not entirely positive whether Anna has traveled with the caravan or not. She's a singer, allegedly, and the caravan comprised entertainers of different persuasions. But is she really an actress? This remains to be seen. What seems peculiar is how artificial and how contrived this dark secret appears to be, as if it were a disguise. What to be afraid of? She lives in a mansion that once belonged to a family of exiles whose political views led them to a far-out town like ours. Because of some ill-conceived sense of camaraderie, they were happy to give shelter to a runaway actress. As soon as she told them she was persecuted by the powers that be. A few years later, they died, suspiciously if you ask me, leaving Willow Mello, their daughter, in the care of their companion. Willow died soon thereafter. Mysteriously, they all died of natural causes, allegedly, even though Willow was buried in a tightly closed coffin. The body was examined by Isidore Barak, however, and he is not a man who would cover up a crime. Anyway, you do good to take a look at the house yourself. The mansion is known as the Willows. It stands by the gullet in Earth. Uh... Oh, I'll get to know her. All right. Okay, so this lady just gives us hints repeatedly, I guess. I keep forgetting the most basic things these days. Uh, can you tell me about Lara? I will not speak of the matter. You will know Lara well enough as soon as you meet her. My relationship with her is complicated. Sure, I'm not gonna push on that then. All right. Um, are there any dialogue options with you that I haven't exhausted? Because it seems like this girl is a changeling. She's not the murderer. Uh, do you like Evian? Very much. I wouldn't be much of a stretch to say I absolutely admire her. I don't know really enough about her. Sure. Okay. My arms are flaccid, as if made of cotton wool. Good to know. Um, so I can say, not quite. In any case, I hope that getting to know me will not become a problem to you. And then the, the other most one. The subtle foley grows out of the most subtle wisdom. You managed to find out so much about me in one minute's talk. Okay, so the other two dialogue options don't lead us anywhere. Cool. How are we doing? We're getting there. It's 2 p.m. Not quite bedtime yet. All right, so we got another lead to go on now. Lara was nice enough. I should probably go talk to Lara. So I found out about the thing she asked me to do. She might have some more stuff for us. Maybe. Sure, this is Lara's house. 
Hey, look at that. Navigation. All right, where's Lara? Lara, here you are. They say Ripper was caught. Does he really cut people? I have a very bad feeling. The same feeling plagued me just before my father died. I have a bad feeling too, although I'm generally not superstitious. Okay, no, I can't talk to her. Presumably until I find out more about what the children are doing. Well, in that case, we're going to go talk to... What's her name? Anna at the Willows. Okay, I think this is our, our house here. Let's see if we can... Oh, I guess that would be you. Uh. Okay. I could have been a famous singer. I could have been a famous singer. Oh, that is really too much. Who the hell are you? Why have you donned this dreadful outfit? Uh, my name is Daniel Dankowski. What's wrong with my outfit? It's snakeskin. Are you a performer? A circus actor? A tamer? Tell me the truth. Uh, I'm a tamer after a fashion. I thought so. I knew someone like that would pay me a visit very soon. How horrible. What's horrible? Everything. Everything's horrible. You came to, you know, after me, right? Uh, of course not. How could you think something like that? I used to sing every evening. So that man, he's like, dead, dead, right? Uh, he's dead, yes. <laughs> well, he's in breathing. No pulse means dead. Oh, I was so scared. He barged in here all bloody. I thought he was sent here, but he didn't try to attack me. Oh, just look at those hideous wounds. It's like he was cut with precision to mangle the body as much as possible. Who would do something like this? An experienced surgeon, someone who knows anatomy. His sinews are cut. He's mumbling something to that extent. There's this hunt for Simon Kane's murderer going on, right? Well, they mistook this guy for the culprit, even though he was actually a hunter, not a huntee. It was Simon's murderer that wounded him so horribly, wasn't it? Um, why do you think the man himself is not the murderer? But he was going after the murderer. They tried to ambush him at the station, in case he tries to catch a ride away from town. And you know what? Their assumptions were correct. This guy did indeed come face to face with the murderer there. Here's the result. Is that what he told you before passing away? Well, yeah. Why are you surprised? It makes sense for him to try and explain why he barged in anyway. His story was very haphazard, though. Actually, he didn't say much at all, but I think I know what had happened. You're too kind. By the way, it was Victor Kane who sent me here to check on you and your guest. I think one of the chasers that was after the poor sod must have informed him about all this. Um, just don't you call anyone here, okay? Please, I'm begging you. If they find a dead man in my house... Ah, uh, that's hard to explain, but I promise I'll do so later, when we have the time. I didn't kill him, I swear, and I couldn't have mutilated him so horrendously. I'm not saying you're guilty at all, whatever gave you the idea. Oh, many people would be more than happy to accredit this blood to my hands. They just need an excuse, a chance to grab me by the arm, and then they'll twist it so hard that I'll even confess. Just help me bury him, will you? I can see a spark of kindness in you. Go to the cemetery. Tell the caretaker there's someone less than living in my house. And the caretaker won't go about asking unnecessary questions. She isn't much of a talker. People even used to think she was mute, but she's so kind. A true angel. Some people would gladly die to be taken care of by someone like her. Is she underage or something? What? Since the old caretaker died, another dark story. Anyway, his daughter is the one who's taking care of the cemetery now. Name is Grace. She'll see to this dead man as though he was still alive and kicking. Er, I mean figuratively, of course. Uh, I'll help you get rid of the body, no questions asked. I'm expecting to hear an enthralling story afterwards. Tell the Canes all about this. Let them evaluate the situation on their own. Uh, I don't know that we wanted to like. I don't. I don't think we want to just get rid of this body, right? I think it's it's important that someone looks into this, even though she's probably going to be unhappy about it. Well, Shabnak is an evil man eater made of clay and bones. She's the murderer. Why are there so many outsiders in the town? Uh, I'd like to hear your honest opinion. Do you also find Simon Kane's death unnatural? No, not at all. How could someone living on, or perhaps even beyond, the edge of what's humanly possible not die? At least that's what the smart people are saying, not my ideas. So Simon loved to challenge limits and restrictions, I gather. Indeed, he loved it, and he was good at it. You could bury him underground for a couple of days, and he'd be totally fine. He was pierced with iron rods once, too. One of them broke his chest, but Simon didn't die. Tricks like these would have been incredibly popular in a circus. Oh, I missed the man. So he appreciated him as a fellow professional. It just occurred to me that he could have killed himself. What? 
I don't know. There's no one else that could have done it. No one, and I mean it. Neither the biggest hater nor the most desperate beggar. I mean, in his case, suicide is a way more believable conjecture than murder. Are you sure? Nobody's to blame for his death. I honestly believe that Simon was doomed. What he did was too much for a single person to handle. I feel my leg is being pulled. Yeah, I'm gonna have to agree on that one. I doubt that he killed himself in that manner. I don't want to undress. Everything is changing for the better. Okay. Alright. So that's all of her dialogue. Alright, can I take anything from her house? Probably not. I don't think I can just steal from random people. Alright. Well, I'm gonna go, uh... Tell someone that there's a dead body in this lady's house, I guess. Tell the canes. I don't know which cane in particular. I guess all three of them. It's the fastest way to get to the canes from here. Alright, so I checked my notes and said I should talk to Victor. I think this is Victor's house. Hello. I fear that Simon's death is a symbolic event. Uh, how can I help you? I've paid a visit to a most suspicious lady. Her name is Anna Angel. There's a mauled body at her house. Indeed. So you've already made it as far as the Willows, which is what her mansion is called. Well, it used to be called, before the Willows withered. You're quick to make new acquaintances. What do you make of this lady? Uh, suspicious. She's hiding something. Lying. Curious. She came to that house as a fugitive six years ago. It is hers now. The family that had given her shelter went on to disappear in a rather distasteful manner. The owner succumbed to a fatal disease that had struck them rather suddenly, and their daughter, Willow, simply vanished. And now she's asked me to get rid of a dead body and keep it a secret. I think we ought to... What kind of person is this, Anna? What kind of disease? Peculiar, peculiar kind of pest broke out amongst... Factory workers five years ago, not here but in the poor districts. Isidore took care of it quickly. There were many deaths, but only in the crude sprawl, the district that borders on the abattoir. But the Willows is on the riverbank. The infection never made it that far. An odd story, don't you think? Um, I don't think she's the murderer. I don't think we know enough about her to say that. Uh, don't worry, all in due time. Should Anna ever ask you to assist her in some innocuous-looking business, take your time before you agree. Give it some thought and try to find out as much as possible. Thank you. Okay, but can I tell you that there's, yes. like, a dead... Okay, I can't. Okay, I can no longer go back and tell him that there's a dead body in her house. Well. Or that, um... I can't go back and tell him that, um... She wanted me to get rid of the dead body. Okay. So there's that. Victor believes that Anna Angel's guest has nothing to do with Simon's murder. Rather, she should be searching for someone cryptic there for to only as she. Particularly eerie specification. If you ask me truth, true, it does have the number of possible suspects that I can't say I relish the idea. Alright, well. Who else can we talk to that we haven't really talked to? So hers is... I don't know what the, the color coding on the map means, right? So the circles... There's a circle and a red hand there. There's a red hand there, which is Victor. There's a circle here, which is Maria. There's a circle there for Ava, I'm guessing? I don't know what, what the symbols mean. Like, why they, they get different symbols. And now we've got... She's got a yellow hand instead of a red one. I don't know what any of that means. Alright. Well... Let's go while we're here, see if there's any other dialogue options that I missed for Maria and Georgie. I can't remember what the other guy's name is. Hi, Maria. Did you see anything weird on your way here? I, kinda, yeah. Um, we the Kane's always are not in touch with Monday in reality, driven by love. Love can be furious, funny, and blind, but there's never a need to make an excuse for it, is there? I'm not sure I'll be a great talker. Okay, so, nope, can't talk to her about anything else. So that just leaves... What's his name in the third house? It definitely starts with a G. I just can't remember it. Oh, I didn't notice that tree the first time. It's an interesting looking plant. Hello, 
Greg? So the Sabordovs have Sergei. offered patronage to some changeling. Who is she? Interesting. Okay. All right. You have a few. You have a few things that I haven't I haven't talked to you about. Which of the locals could help me? Whose word can be trusted? I don't know for how long you'll have to remain here, Doctor. You're most welcome to be my guest, even though I won't try to keep you. While you're here, though, and especially since you're trying to find out the truth, it's my duty to offer you a piece of advice. I'd be most grateful for it. This remote place has a history of its own. There's not enough time to retell it to you, which is unfortunate, since it's the background of the town that may possibly justify some local conventions that will most likely seem barbaric to an educated person like yourself. Yeah, I did see some people just, like, burning a girl in the street. That was, uh... Let's see. What traces did history leave in your society, then? There are three truths that rule this town, three origins, three ideas, if you like. For several generations, these three powers have been in conflict with each other. I suspect none of them can exist without the other two, yet each of them still strives to dominate. Each of them has its own voice, too. Uh, tell me more. These voices are the ruling families, the co-owners of the Bull Project, who have been ruling the town for almost two centuries. Each one of the truths they represent is screaming at the top of its lungs, and in, doing, in so doing travesties whatever value it carries. Uh, who are they? First voice is the Sabarovs, the second is the Olgimskis, the third one is us, the Canes. We're the three heads of one beast. Each of the clans will offer their own understanding of what is going on. Each of the three will use their own voice and the voice of their followers to lie and distort the truth. We cannot exist otherwise. However, in doing so, we will inadvertently reveal the entirety of the truth to anyone who would listen. Uh, you suggest I believe you? I suggest you believe no one. Perhaps I am the only one of the three rulers that would ask you to disregard his very words. If nothing else, I hope it will win me your favor. At least I'm offering you honest advice. You should never trust any of us completely, neither the Canes, nor the Olgimskis, nor the Sabarovs. What am I supposed to do then? Well, no one will dare lie to your face. I have no doubts everyone will tell you the truth, but they will tell it in such a fashion that this truth will conceal the reality better than any deception would. The only thing I'm asking is that you don't jump to conclusions. Compare different versions. Your extraordinary intelligence will allow you to ascertain the truth. That inspires hope. Furthermore, each of us will try to paint a rather ungainly picture of the other two. Most likely, we'll fill you in on the negative sides of each other faction and withhold anything that is good about them. That is inevitable. None of us will stoop to outright slander, so everything that will be said will most likely be true, but this truth will be one-sided and incomplete. Listen carefully to what we say and take it into account. Thank you. Stories of the evil that the Canes have unleashed under this world are partially true. Do not feel obliged to act in our favor. As you can see, I will stop before nothing to ensure an unbiased investigation. The lack of prejudice I want to instill in you is the one and only reason why I'm making a confession like this. I do not want my brother to have died in vain. Uh, here our desires concur, Judge. Alright, what else can you tell me? Few people know death. We only endure it. Usually from determination. And even from stupidity and custom. Okay. Uh, I'd like to examine your brother's body. We've sent for Isidore Barak's most accomplished apprentice. His name is Stanislav Rubin. Quite a resolute and talented man, this Rubin is. I have great expectations of him. He will bring everything you need, and you will examine the body together. Uh, I am no pathologist, and autopsy is not my specialty, but I can perform a preliminary examination. I'm genuinely sorry, Doctor, but our family traditions were cherished for as long as the family has existed. One of such traditions requests the dead to be left alone for 24 hours. The body is not to be seen or touched by anyone. The spirit of deferral will be over by tomorrow. Uh, curious tradition. On several occasions, excessive haste has led to undesirable consequences. The phenomenon that Isidore has invited you here to study. It is in our blood. This physiological trait of our family shows itself from time to time. Quite intriguing. Examination of the body will not help you in any way. This puzzle has to be solved within your mind. I'm not able to or even allowed to tell you any more than that. Believe me, I'm not trying to conceal any evidence from you. The body is kept in the ice house. It is intact, but focus may not be breached. Uh, okay, I will wait then. Most men only die because they know not how to prevent dying. Fair. Uh, how many doctors are there in your town? If we exclude Isidore Barak, Stanislav Rubin is the only doctor here. He's the most competent of Isidore's apprentices. The rest are good for nothing as far as I can tell. They're only capable of distorting the knowledge their teacher is trying to pass to them. Do you trust this Rubin? I would trust Reuben with my life. A competent medic of remarkable courage and laudable integrity. Everything he does is done with appropriate diligence and care. He doesn't like people that much, but he's eager to serve them. Why do you ask? I just wonder what kind of man he is. How do I get to know him? Reuben will come here tonight to get down to examining my brother. You will get acquainted then. Alright, okay. So that's all the information we're going to get out of you. We've got everything out of Maria and Victor and Lara. Go give, uh... Give Ava Yar a quick stop by, see if... I feel like I've talked... 
gotten everything out of AVR, but we'll find out while we're over here. Uh, who else can I talk to? I can try and talk to old Gimsky again. See if he'll give me anything. Uh, we've talked to Yulia. And then we've just got the Sabarovs. Be nice if they would let me into Isidore's house to look around. Maybe I can convince uh, Sabarov guy to let me in. Hello, Ava. I had a feeling you would come. Oh, I found out more about our morning visitors. They turned out to be runaways. Can you imagine? What have they run away from? A jail, a bedlam, or a zoo, judging by their appearance? The Gimsias have closed the termitary again, and those who managed to escape from there are now being hunted. Capella told me all about this. Some of them ran away, and some went into hiding in the town. Capella is worried. Who's Capella? Big Vlad's daughter. The beloved daughter, too. She's wonderful and has these abilities. The children follow her as if they were charmed, just like they followed that piper. Well, she said she wanted to save the fugitive from her family's wrath. Is that so? Capella and Vlad the Younger are poles apart. Vlad's primary concern is the interests of his family. So the sister is worried that the brother will kill the runaway. She'd rather have him survive the night and escape into the steppe. Where could the runaway be hiding? In a hospice in Earth. Well, hospice is just a name, really. Wait. Are you planning to visit the place? Then help them escape into the steppe before Vlad sends mercenaries after them. That would be a good deed. We've had enough murders, haven't we? True. I'll see what I can do about it. Okay. And then... If we help... Them out... We might be able to talk to... The old Gimsky daughter. Who I suspect... Has some insight into what's going on with the children. Unless... I'm getting the names mixed up. Because I think they said... Camilla was the one they were all following. Alright, so what's the quickest way over there? Just go across this bridge right here, I guess, and then make our way across town. Hmm. Alright, my exhaustion is getting up there. Alright, let's go. We'll go talk to this guy, and then I think we're gonna have to find somewhere to, uh, to go to sleep. What time is it? It's only 4 p.m. Uh, where are you guys running off to? It's weird. I don't think I've seen any of the NPCs running before. So it looks like our friend is in this house. Locked. Ah, okay. Uh... I keep trying to press shift to run, but I don't think there's actually a run button in this game. It's a jump. That seems to be about it. Alright, let's try the front door then. Oh. Okay. That's weird. Lies always turn out to be true. Don't mess with Earth. Do you know where to find clean water around here? Uh, there's a river close by. All that water comes from the steppe and isn't exactly clean. Yesterday I inspected all the springs in the area and there seemed to be no more clean water around. That salty taste is everywhere. It's reddish in color and there are disgusting clots in it. Where can I find clean water then? Townsfolk store clean water in homemade reservoirs. This modest supply should be enough to help us last a little while, but afterwards we'll have to drink that bloody mixture. How disgusting. To tame his impertinence, Earth had disgorged a monster from deep within its bowels. What do you want, I wonder? So, uh, you live here, huh? No, I don't. But seriously, what brings you here, sir? Outsider doctor? I just wanted to inspect the house. No one here is ill. In fact, there is no one here that could be of interest to you in any way. You're looking in the wrong place, Doctor. Uh, there are runaway fugitives here, though. Was it Vlad the Younger that dropped you a hint about a killer hiding here? That little spider. He simply respects his father and doesn't want to wash the dirty linen of his family in public. The dirty linen, do explain. Big Vlad has plugged the termitary up for some for a reason. The butcher's mumblings is all over the place, but if you listen carefully, you'll make out tales of such horrors that I get shivers all over. Thousands of people have lost their minds all at once there. Many have died. Something's brewing inside. Uh, can you lead the runaway out of town? Really? Why? Here he's entertaining me, and it's dangerous to go out into the steppe anyway. What if his pursuers rip me apart in the streets? What if they think I'm a shabnak adir? 
What can you offer me in return for the service? Um, is there any for that? I'll speak to him myself. Go then. The butcher's in the hospice. The entrance is the other side of the house. Don't come back here complaining afterwards, though. All right. Yeah, we'll go talk to our uh, to our friend, the butcher. It's a little like a blocked off area here. Nice place you got here. But you're tall. Uh. Okay. Ow. can't search his body or anything. I mean, I punched him a bunch. He's not dead. I don't think. Beast-like fugitive. It's unable to fulfill the user's request. Eh. Alright. I'm assuming I would have had to tell the, uh, convince the priest to take him out of town. Well, that's unfortunate. We're gonna, we're just gonna live with the consequences of our actions. So I'm not gonna reload and try to do it better. I feel like that's against the spirit of the game, especially on a first playthrough. Hi. We frequently do good to enable us with impunity to do evil. Is there anyone around that would want to see Simon killed? No one's seen the Shabnak yet, but everyone knows what he wants already. Do you know that a man eater's victim feels the, their encroaching death? They know in advance they're next on his list. And so they walk about restlessly, waiting and waiting and waiting. And then the wait is over. And that's how you can tell who's being hunted. Why are you calling her a he? I don't believe the man eater's a woman. Anything's possible, of course, but I think it's sexless. You seem to be well informed. Oh, okay. So that would lead There's somewhere. a hole under my heart. Good for you. All right. Well, that's all the dialogue we're getting out of her. Okay. So unfortunately, I think we goofed that one up. What else can we do while we're over here? We could go back to the willows because we're right nearby. Just gotta keep an eye on our exhaustion, which is uh, building up a little bit. Do you have anything to say? Kindly mend my clothes. Why are women being attacked? I seem to remember that when Victoria died, everyone rushed to look for an undead Kohler. Who is Victoria? Victoria was a mistress. Somehow it seemed that an ordinary creature couldn't hurt her. Her death was unexpected. She was very young and so well loved by the people. So the rumor started immediately that a Bayan man eater had taken her soul. Did you, they try to seize every fifth man, too? No, no one was seized, but there was an anxiety. There was no doubt that an evil was walking among us. You can always feel it, and it changes the density of the world. Your instincts just tell you that it's true. This is an old step wisdom, and you can't avoid it. You really can't. A step is wiser than we are. Nothing to be done about it. Alright, that seems to be all we're getting out of here. Okay. Well, I think that's actually a decent place for us to call it for today having now beat a man to death with our bare hands. Um, so, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next episode. Goodbye.